So today we're going to give a quick update on Brazil, what's been happening in the second half of 2023. This was recorded on the 11th of December and we're expecting some imminent news from this really hot exploration area. So here's Brazil. We're going to uh, look at uh, some of these assets in the Campos Basin. We're going to go to the Espirito Santo Basin, have a quick look at uh, Buzios down at uh, the Santos Basin, and finally look at Morfo, Foz do Amazonas. I'm going to start by looking at the fourth licensing round, or the fourth cycle of open acreage of concession, OPC, as it's known. The fourth round basically covered onshore and offshore blocks. There were 955 blocks offered, both onshore and offshore, and 82 companies qualified to bid. Now, the blocks were announced on the 16th of October. The awards are going to be made due on the 13th of December, 2023, two days after this video was recorded. So here are the basins up and down. So in the north end here, the Foz do Amazonas, uh, all the way down to the uh, Pilatus Basin. And we've been doing a, we've done a video on this recently uh, with respect to drilling uh, imminently. So uh, the two basins that have featured predominantly in the area, Campos and Santos located here. Now, uh, one of the, uh, the questions is going to be, uh, is there going to be interest here in this equatorial margin with uh, some of its environmental challenges and the underexplored Pilatus Basin? Well, it's the sort of uh, the conjugate margin. Uh, it's the on the opposite side of where the sort of Orange Basin area is, and uh, that's drawing an awful lot of interest right now. So, I'm sure there's going to be uh, interest and in companies looking here. The pre-salt. This is the location of it shown on the map here um, in the Campos and Santos basins. And uh, if we look at the pre-salt licensing round, you have to qualify for bidding. And so far, we know that BP Shell, Total Energy, Chevron, Petronas, and Qatar Energy, they've all qualified. They're all in looking to get some awards. Petrobras and some other companies, they were excluded from bidding. So um, it was trying to encourage uh, more investment from the uh, the foreign major companies and uh, here you can see uh, outlined in red these are the blocks the th five of the six pre-salt blocks that are in the round one of them no that wasn't uh, nominated so let's quickly have a look at the developments acquisitions drilling and future plans in brazil so we're going to start by having a quick look at the Campos Basin. And within the Campos, well, we've got Equinor. They've got a $9 billion plan for two field developments. Now, they were discovered back in 2010, and they're in ultra-deep water, 2,900-meter water depth. They're going to be called Rea Manta and Rea Pintata, and expected to be uh, online and uh, first oil by 2028. It's anticipated that these developments are going to be the first project to supply offshore gas directly to the grid. That's via a 200-kilometer pipeline from the Cabionas FPSO, the Floating Production and Storage Offshore Vessel. A planned, uh, plan was submitted in September 2023, and uh, there you can see the partnership. Uh, Prio, well... Milestones and plans here. Brazil's largest independent, it was formerly known as Petro Rio, but Prio now operates Frad, Albacor Leste, and the Polvo Tubaro and Martello clusters. Prio is now producing over 100,000 barrels a day. The uh, new Frad producer is part of the third revitalization of the, uh, of the freight field. Now, it was a major incident back in 2011, then operator Chevron. Um, there was a spill of nearly 3,000 barrels um, before the incident, producing 80,000 barrels a day, afterwards down to, to 20, um, but now back up to 60,000 barrels uh, of oil per day. It's uh, maybe that Freightfields has more upside. The recent Maracana well found oil in different reservoir zones. Now, when I saw this picture here of the Valente, the FPSO on Freight, with its capacity of 100,000, uh, you know, I noticed on the heli deck there, you can see there's the there's a substantial section of the uh, of of the crew of the FPSO all gathered on the heli deck there for a, for a pose. So um, there you have it, and uh, I'm not sure if it was taken from a helicopter or somebody's flying a drone out there. Anyway, that's the size of the vessel. It is absolutely enormous. So also there is the Wahoo development, and uh, this is Prio uh, and BV as partner. Now it's a pre-salt discovery. Uh, it's in a water depth of uh, 1,500 meters, and it's in the carbonate Macabu formation. 
at around about 4,750 metres. Now, plan to be uh, four producers, two water injectors, and targeting around about 40,000 barrels of oil per day. It's 35 kilometres uh, back to the frayed uh, FPSO, so uh, that's going to be a, a long tie back. Drilling expected to commence in 2024, and uh, this is the uh, the Hunter Queen, the uh, the rig that is uh, anticipated is going to be used. Well, also in the uh, Campos, we're going to see Petronas's first well in Brazil. It's uh, in block CM661. It's the Mola 1 well. Uh, it's uh, going to be a two-well campaign. The second well is going to be the Fokat 1. It's uh, both pre-salt targets in ultra-deep water. They're going to be using the uh, Valaris Renaissance drill ship. The uh, Total Energy's Ubaye 1 well, uh, which is located just to the north of the Petronas block, suppose uh, was reported as having gas shows on the uh, 23rd of October 2023. Petronas are partners in this. So um, we'll see what uh, is delivered within the Petronas block in the coming videos. Shell drilled the Sukarana well, 1A. Um, it was a pre-salt target. Supposed to have uh, found uh, gas shows with partners uh, Qatar Energy and Chevron. Drilled with a noble developer. And you can see on this section here, on the right, you can see this is the location on this very, very large salt stock, I guess you'd call it. Not quite the sort of diaper shape that perhaps you might describe as this, but uh, yeah, a big stock, stock or, or wall. Yeah, it uh, shows, but not quite, uh, not quite the discovery that was hoped for. These images are from uh, Geopost, which is uh, from Catalyst. Now, Petrobras, well, we're looking at the uh, Marlim field, which is located here, and uh, also the Vaudor field, which is just located to the northwest of the uh, Marlim. Now, the Anna Nevi FPSO achieved first oil in early 2023, and the Anita Garibaldi FPSO achieved first oil in August 2023. So two new developments here. And these are revitalizing the, the Marlin and Voador fields. They add to about 150 barrels of oil equivalent uh, a day. And Petrobras are targeting 920,000 barrels of oil per day for the Campos Basin in 2027. So lots more developments out here. The FBSOs are replacing nine platforms due to be decommissioned. So here's the two FBSOs. They're pretty uh, pretty large vessels. And by the looks of it, this one isn't quite in its uh, complete uh, format. Replacing the P32 uh, platform on the Marlin field. And here's the uh, Anita Garibaldi. So, moving further south, uh, we'll take a look at the Santos Basin. And first up, we've got the Bacalao uh, feed. Um, this is uh, Equinor in a partnership with ExxonMobil and Petrogal. Uh, here's the uh, Bacalao field located down here. It's previously known as the Kakara Discovery. It's a pre-salt carbonate discovery made back in 2012 in ultra-deep water, 2,900 metres. Uh, the FID was signed off in May 2023. First oil, well, 2027. Now, 19 development wells uh, anticipated on this development, and uh, they're going to be using this uh, Modec FBSO design. Petrobras's Buzios field. Well, what, what can you say about this field? It's Everything about it is just absolutely amazing. It's a super giant. It's a uh, pre-salt field. They're now talking about starting phase five using Modex Amarante Barroso. Uh, it's the fifth FBSO in the field on a 21-year charter with 150,000 barrels a day um, oil capacity, um, 6 million cubic meters a day gas handling capacity and water injection capacity of uh, 220 thousand barrels of water a day now the vessel uh, arrived in field in february 2023 and by june the five producers and five injectors had been drilled and completed now the Buzios install capacity it's going to be of the order of about 750,000 barrels of oil. There are further six FPSOs planned. And uh, there's the location on the map there, just more or less just uh, south southeast of uh, Rio de Janeiro. And there's a look at the vessel. Uh, it's enormous. And there's the partnership. 
Next up, uh, Petrobras have been appraising the Sagittario discovery. Now, it's the third well on the structure. It was completed in October of 2023. The original uh, discovery uh, was back in 2012. Now, the first uh, appraisal well, which is the second well on the structure, it was a little disappointing. Uh, it was back in early 2020. And uh, well, despite finding uh, hydrocarbons, the uh, porosity and permeability characteristics of the uh, the carbonate uh, reservoir were, were somewhat disappointing, and uh, this was due to precipitation by a carbonate cement. So the second appraisal, well, that'll assess the reservoir extent and uh, quality. So here's a seismic line seeing uh, where, where the wells are and where they're being drilled on this uh, particular feature. FDP submission um, is, uh, is due by March 2024, if... Uh, Petrobras, along with partners Shell and Repsol, are going to be moving forward with this project. Now moving to the Espirito Santo Basin. So there's been uh, A&D activity in the region. At BW Energy, they've uh, completed the acquisition of the Golfino Cluster and the Camarupin Discovery um, from Petrobras. And this was done in August. Here's the Golfino and a number of uh, discoveries in and around, some gas, some oil. Uh, here's... Kamarupim, um, just up to the north, which is a uh, gas discovery. And uh, also there is uh, a discovery here in Brigadero, it's, uh, which is 65% uh, BW Energy um, and potentially a, a tie back to uh, Golfino. An active area and uh, being BW Energy looking to, uh, looking to develop further in the region. Moving up to the north into the equatorial margin and we get to the Foz do Amazonas Basin. So the, uh, the map here shows the Foz de Amazonas Basin area. Uh, here is the, uh, the Guyana, the Starbrook block here, ExxonMobil. Uh, if we go a long way down here to the uh, southeast, here we can see this is the Zadeus. Um, this was a non-commercial uh, discovery in French Guiana, uh, 120 uh, kilometers further on. And we get here into the Foz de Amazonas Basin, and this is the, uh, the Morpho well. Well, an interesting area, and uh, it really has to be has to be uh, drilled to to discover if there is a, a, a trend or a, a potential oil province down here. Now, it was to be the first well for for Petrobras in the Equatorial uh, Margin campaign, but uh, it didn't get environmental approval. Now, there's an appeal ongoing in water depths of two thousand eight hundred and eighty meters. This is seriously deep drilling, uh, deep water drilling, and uh, Cretaceous turbidites were were targeted. Uh, similar to the uh, the Jupiter analog. Now, the, the drill ship, the ODN-2, was on location for, from uh, December 2022 uh, for four months, but um, that was before IBAMA, Institute of Environmental and Renewable Natural Resources, they denied permission to drill the well. Now, there were 14 wells planned in the region um, by 2026, and it's an investment of over $2 billion dollars uh, to actually try and figure out if this is a, a new petroleum province. Ibama have granted Petrobras a uh, drilling license for two wells in the uh, the offshore Potagua uh, basin, and this is to appraise the 2013 Pitu discovery. They had hoped that uh, this uh, new frontier would replace the prolific pre-salt fields, which you know are on production now in the uh, Santos and Campos basin, and um, they will be declining in in uh, in time and uh, to actually find some new reserves to, to keep the uh, production profile for Brazil high. Now, in 2023, in the first quarter, CGG and TGS, they uh, completed the uh, second phase of the Foz do Amazonas 3D survey. So, activity in the area, but uh, we still have to wait to see if there's uh, any major developments. So, here's, uh, here's a post from, from Eddie Yong, and this is showing all the opportunities and prospects and leads here in the Guyana Suriname area um, and this is the Starbrook uh, predominantly the Starbrook block in here um, and that's Guyana if we move down to the Foz do Amazonas basin well um, some of the features uh, look exciting look interesting look look similar analogous but really very very early stages of exploration in this region 
So stepping back and uh, having a look at uh, gas infrastructure, here's the uh, the frontier area we've we've just been looking at around here. Uh, there is no infrastructure in the region, so very much frontier. Here we can see uh, here's the the pipelines that uh, that exist going all the way up and down the coast and inland. There have been another development of coal, and that's the uh, floating storage and um, regasification unit. This is for LNG. And uh, it was Accelerate Energy and Petrobras signed a 10-year charter for this uh, FSRU, which is known as the Sequoia. And uh, that's going to be located here. And it's going to uh, give the opportunity to import gas from uh, other regions. In terms of oil infrastructure, well, again, the uh, the Foster Amazonas uh, area very much uh, a frontier, uh, and in fact, a lot of the uh, a lot of the offshore is uh, sort of uh, standalone. Not too many pipelines offshore Brazil, um, but we do have some onshore pipelines and some coastal pipelines. Pause the video if you want to see more. Now, Brazil is expected to become a member of the OPEC Plus coalition in January 2024. OPEC countries are shown on this map here. And over on the right, you can see the uh, distribution of uh, production by uh, the major countries, Saudi Arabia, Russia, um, these in OPEC, these here out, uh, out with uh, OPEC. But uh, Brazil will be a uh, substantial addition. And of course, with uh, additional alliance producers, uh, the, the market share and, and the... Uh, the impact of coordinated policies on, on oil supply and prices will be felt by the planet. So in summary, license rounds are ongoing. The Campos and Santos basins continue to be the focus, but uh, they've not had a significant pre-salt discovery for, for some time. Um, Petrobras plans to explore the equatorial margin, but it has stalled and uh, they're awaiting environmental consent. That must be costly, having a rig sitting there for that period of time. That's not very efficient and it's not very good for, for the industry or anybody in particular. 2023 continues to develop the pre-salt play, um, developments coming forward and all this information and much, much more you'll find in Trove. Thank you for watching. I hope you found that interesting. Please hit the like, subscribe and ring the bell. Hope to see you back on our channel before too long. Bye for now.